Hello everyone. I hope that as you watch this you're doing okay. These are challenging times. It's hard to believe we've been under quarantine for seven weeks and it's now May. I actually love the month of May. The weather's finally uh, warmer. It's a time when we can plant flowers and vegetables in our gardens. It might be a time of graduation and new beginnings. In the church, May is the month we celebrate Mary, the mother of Jesus and our mother. May is also a popular time for wedding. So when Monsignor asked us to reflect on an image of Mary, I thought of the wedding at Cana. When I think of that story, I can almost picture myself there. Weddings are joyful and happy times with a couple beginning a new chapter in their lives and family and friends gathering to celebrate this huge milestone. Now the wedding at Cana probably went on for about a week. I imagine that it was large and very festive because they ran out of wine. It was at this wedding that Jesus performed his first miracle, or as John calls them in his gospel, his first sign. Listen to this from John chapter 2. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Now, John's Gospel does not begin with the story of the birth of Jesus. This story of the wedding at Cana is the first time that Mary appears, and she isn't referred to by name, but rather the mother of Jesus. In John's Gospel, the next time we say Mary will be at Calvary, at the cross. In that story, her name also is not said. She's the mother of Jesus, and she's our mother. She's there at the very joyful time, a wedding at the start of Jesus' ministry, and she's there at a heartbreaking time, the death of her son. So, at the wedding, the wine runs out. This would have been an embarrassment for the host. Hospitality was very important, and it would have been humiliating to have to admit that you didn't provide enough wine for the guests who came to the marriage feast at your home. But Mary notices, and she recognizes there's a problem. I wonder if she was in the kitchen, or she heard the servants whispering about this situation. She notices, and she cares. So she says to Jesus, they have no wine. Really, it sounds just like an observation. Maybe it was the tone of her mother voice or that look in her eye. Jesus knew what she wanted. What led her to invite Jesus to take action and to respond to the need? Maybe she saw something in him. While he may have initially protested that his time had not yet come, Mary saw something. Mary models for us a way that we can reflect God's presence by encouraging, inviting, and nurturing others to use the gifts that they have by helping others listen to the call that each of us has to bring about God's glory. Next, she says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. These are the last words recorded in scripture that we hear from Mary. Although she appears again, this is the last time we hear her voice, and it's a command to the servants and to all of us, to do whatever he tells you. In this first of Jesus' miracles, it's the servants, regular people, who hear and follow Jesus' words, and the miracle unfolds. People, us, we're always part of the miracle. In response to a woman, Mary, who saw need, interceded on their behalf, and encouraged the followers to obey, an abundance of wine, of the highest quality was provided. A sign of the glory of God is revealed. 
One of the titles in Vatican II gave to Mary in the document Lumen Gentium is Advocate because she intercedes before God on our behalf. If we ask, Mary will intercede for us. She'll help us do whatever Jesus asks of us. She'll always be watching out for us at the most joyous times in our life and at our worst moments. We remember her as an advocate each time we pray the words, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. During this time of pandemic, this is Pope Francis's prayer to Mary. O oh Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the Roman people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken him on himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of resurrection. Amen. I look forward to seeing everyone again really soon, I hope. Please know that I keep you all in my prayers. And until I see you again, I wish you peace.